Hello, this is Matthew Campagna from theturninggate.net. Today we're looking at the Adobe Lightroom web module and going over some basic usage tips. Um, as you can see, I'm beginning in the library module with a collection of photos. Uh, this is a collection containing 65 images from a photo shoot, and I would like to create a web gallery using these images. Um, the problem is this is a very large collection to use when generating a web gallery. Um, when, you, when you create a web gallery, Lightroom has to crunch through all the photos in your collection to generate previews um, to render that gallery so that you can see it in the web module, and that takes some time. And then sometimes when you're adjusting settings to make the gallery look the way you want to, it will uh, refresh the entire thing and crunch through those photos again, and you sit there and you wait. And it's not fun. Uh, I find that a better way to work with the web module is to work with a very small group of images while, while you're setting things up and then later to apply those web settings to the larger group all at once. Um, so I've gone ahead and I have created a collection uh, containing only five images down here. I'm going to switch over to that. And now that I have my five images, I'm going to jump over to the web module, and it will load things up fairly quickly. Um, as you can see, it defaults to the Lightroom HTML gallery, which is not the gallery I'm going to be using for this demonstration. Uh, instead, I'm going to use my new TTG High Slide Gallery, which I've selected from the engines list right here in the web module. Um, <clears throat> first thing I'm going to do is get rid of that. Okay, so here we are in the web module, looking at my small collection of images that we're using just to get this gallery set up. Uh, the first thing I like to do before I start working is give myself as much screen real estate as possible. So I'm going to hit F two times to go into full screen mode. Um, and then I'm going to get rid of the bar up here, and I'm going to get rid of the sidebar because I just don't need it right now. And as you can see, that opens up a lot of space for me to work with in creating my gallery, which makes it a lot easier to look at it and to get an idea of what things are going to look like on the web in my browser. Um, but there's a problem. If you look over here at the control pane, you can see that things are getting cut off here. And the reason for that is that uh, sometimes third-party developers, like myself, like to use as much space as we can over in the control panes to give our users more information. Um, and to name things in a way that makes sense so that uh, you understand what the controls do kind of intuitively. Um, of course we don't want them to be cut off, that's ugly. Uh, luckily there's an easy fix for this. What I'm going to do is just grab the edge of the pane, just mouse over until the mouse turns into this little cursor with a line of two arrows, and then you can just drag this out until it's nice and wide. Yay, it's bigger. Uh, but if you look, oh, it's still cut off. That's okay. We're going to quit Lightroom restart Lightroom and what we'll find is that when we get back into it those controls will have sized themselves appropriately now that we have a larger space see here we go nothing is cut off anymore it's come down here the sliders are all intact the ID plate is working good for us um, so we're ready to get to work first thing I'm gonna do is start setting up my gallery with an ID plate and uh, I'm not gonna set up the entire website here uh, dur for the, during this demonstration. It's not what I'm trying to do. But I will just make a few changes. Returninggate.net. Okay, that's my website. I'm going to increase the size of my header to 120. I'm going to scroll down and get rid of the gallery description. Maybe I'm going to change the color of the web page. We'll make it uh, this nice... Oh, that was the menu. We'll make that black. And we'll come up here. We'll change the color of the header and background to this nice brick color. And uh, it's starting to look pretty nice. This is kind of what I want my gallery to look like. Get rid of the ID plates. Get rid of the cell numbers. And yeah, maybe that's it. That's what I want my gallery to look like. Great. So, um, I want to get this to my larger collection. Easy enough. All I'm going to do is come over here, 
and uh, go up to the template browser. And I'm going to save these settings. Um, new web gallery. And you can put it wherever you want. If you have folders or you can make a new folder, I'm just going to store it in user templates for now. Hit create. And it appears over here under a template browser as new web gallery. So these are this is now a saved set um, of web settings that I can apply to any collection that I want. So before I go ahead and do that though, there's one more thing I want to show you. Sometimes uh, when you change something over here in the control settings, um, the change may not be reflected over here in the preview. Um, say for example, I want to Let's go back down and turn on the gallery description. Um, one of the kind of cool things that you can do down here is you can actually create a hyperlink right in your descriptions. Um, HTTP www.theturninggate.net which takes you to the turning gate, my website. Um, now as you can see it did kind of a funny thing in here. It, I put HTML over here and it put HTML right over here. Well, that's not what I wanted to do, um, but that's okay. Because sometimes when you make changes, they don't reflect or they don't reflect properly in the preview. So all you need to do is come up to the menu, go to web, and reload the gallery. Uh, on a Mac, you can do this using a shortcut key, Command R. On Windows, I believe it's Control R. So we're going to reload the gallery. And as you can see, this is now a hyperlink. Uh, that will take you to the turninggate.net when you click on it in the web browser. Um, so this has a lot of other uses as well. Like I said, sometimes things don't update the way they should. For example, if I wanted to turn that link we just made another color, say I'm going to make it green. Um, look, it turned my menu items green too. It's not supposed to do that. I have separate controls for those colors here under menu settings. Here's my menu link colors. Um, but again, we can just refresh the gallery and it, set thing, it sets things right. It puts all the settings back to what they're supposed to be for what you have dialed in to your control panel. Um, so that's perfect. Um, but like we said before, we have already saved uh, a set of, of settings. So I'm going to go ahead and jump back to those. As you can see, it went back and applied the settings I had saved to this gallery and I'm ready now to generate my full gallery of 65 images. So I'm going to come back over here to Collections, select that gallery, and I'm going to wait while it loads. Uh, it jumped me back into the Lightroom HTML gallery. Oh no! Um, no, not really. We come over here, we find our new web gallery template, and we activate it. And then as you can see, Lightroom applies our save settings to the new collection of images. Um, and that's it. Those are the basics for working in the web module. And uh, I hope that helps out some of the beginners who are just getting into this stuff. Look forward to more tutorials coming soon from theturninggate.net.